Hello and uh, welcome back to Engineering 211 Statics and I wanted to continue where we left off last time. We talked last time about centroids, the center of mass, center of weight, center of area, center of volume uh, with, in different contexts and I wanted to pick up on some examples. We just talked about equations as of last time so I wanted to tackle some examples and the first one that I'd like to do is for a triangle. Uh, so we'll take a triangle like this. Um, the x-bar would be fairly easy. We recognize that the x-bar would simply be uh, b divided by 2 but the uh, y bar is a little more difficult. I think uh, for some of our past experience we know that y bar is probably going to be a third of h uh, but sometimes uh, tackling a problem that we may know the answer to is important to make sure that our methodology is correct because we're going to tackle some that we probably don't know the answer to. So let's try that in trying to find y bar and I think the uh, best way to do this is to look at this and uh, put our differential element on this thing and we're going to look at uh, taking a differential element that looks like this, where this uh, distance here is going to be uh, dy. And this distance here, we'll say, is the base b, whereas that base is x. And we'll say that uh, the distance up here, we'll say that that's going to be equal to y. So if I want to uh, go through this, I can say that uh, y bar, y bar, is going to be equal to the integral of y dA divided by a. So I have to figure out what uh, a is and what uh, dA is. Well, continuing along with that, I know that a is simply the area of the uh, gross section. So that's the area of a triangle, which is base times height divided by 2. Okay, And we could go through integral. I mean, we could integrate that to get that. But most of the time, uh, we'll, we'll know that. And then uh, dA, that's the area of this element here, right? So I could say that that's uh, when dx, or uh, excuse me, when dy goes to, to 0, uh, it looks like a rectangle. So it's going to have dimensions x times dy the height dy times the length dx. So that gives me dA. Now I don't want an x running around in this calculation. I want this to be in terms of y. So if I look at similar triangles, so looking at similar triangles, I know that because uh, both of these triangles, this smaller triangle and this larger triangle, they share this angle, so they are mathematically similar. So I can say that x is to the height of the base of this little one is to its height, which is going to be the total height minus y, as the base is of the larger one is to the total height h. So I can solve for x. x turns out to be equal to base b times quantity h minus y divided by h. So when I put that in, I'll make that substitution for x right there, and I'll be able to say then that y bar is equal to, we said that was the integral of y dA over a, so I'm going to say it's the integral from 0, because h is equal to 0 at this point, it's equal to h at that point. So I'm going to go from 0 to h of y dA. Okay, y dA. Well, I make my substitution for x and dA, so I'm going to make that substitution on that term right there. So I'm going to have the base times the height minus y, all divided by the height, and then I have dy. So there's the integral, and now I still need to and again, just the, what I've done here is this whole piece right here is this is x and this is, where was I here, dA, this is dy. So there's x and dy. Now I have to divide this whole thing. We said we we're going to divide by the area, which is substituting in for the area, that's base times the height divided by 2. Okay, So as I go through this, I should be able to base, bring the base out, the base uh, 
p is not a function of y, so I can say that uh, y bar is equal to uh, the base b times the integral from 0 to h of, what's that going to be? Should be, I get to cancel the h's, so I'm going to have y minus, uh, take the y through, y squared over h. And then I'll have the dy, and in the denominator, I have base times height over 2. So I'll get to uh, cancel those. And if I uh, continue on with this, this is going to be, what, uh, 2 divided by the height h times when I do the integral, I'm going to get, uh, what, y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3h, evaluating this at then at 0 and h. Let me double check that. Yes, I think we're okay there. So I have that this is equal to It's equal to 2 over h times, when I put the upper limit in there, I'm going to have uh, h squared divided by 2 minus h cubed over 3h. And then the lower limits, I'll just, uh, I won't have anything on the lower limits. I'll have minus 0, minus 0. So this turns out to be equal to 2 over h times what are we going to have there? h squared over 2 minus, I get to cancel an h, h squared over 3, which this would be uh, 3, 6, and this would be 2, 6. 3, 6 less 2, 6 is a 6. So I have 2h times. Um, 1 sixth h squared. So I have to cancel that with that, that with that, and I end up with what? h over 3. And that's y bar. So when we said that the centroid was a third from the large end and two thirds from the small end, uh, that's actually true. We've got that y bar is h over 3. Okay, um, so hopefully a fairly straightforward problem, hopefully a good problem. Let's try one we may not necessarily know the answer to. So let's try this one that looks like a uh, maybe a bit of a pizza crust or pie crust, whatever you prefer thinking about or, or eating. So it's not the whole piece, it's just the uh, crust that's left. Okay, and let me uh, document this. We're going to say that, uh, I'll say this is uh, x, and we can say that this is y. And I'm going to say that this, uh, we're going to have this going from alpha positive above x to minus alpha below x. And we're going to say that this has some radius r. Okay. Well, I would like to find x bar. So I'm looking to find x bar. Y bar is actually fairly easy. I mean, if we wanted y bar, that's equal to zero. It's symmetrical about this thing, right? So I mean, we could go through a lot of work and get that, but we could recognize that it's equal to, to zero. So we're going to use the equation then to get x bar, but x bar is it going to be equal to the integral of x dl over L. Remember our center of length as we were finishing up with the last lecture. You can go back and look at that if you'd like to. Um, so I need to talk about the the total length of this thing. The uh, length of this thing is going to be equal to 2 alpha times r. Okay, 2 alpha times r. 
If you think about a, a circle, a full circle being um, 2 pi, and then the circumference is uh, pi times d, hopefully this makes sense, that the length of this arc um, across there, that's going to be the length from there, and we'll say from there to there, that's equal to, that's the length we're talking about, 2 alpha r. Okay, and what's dl? If we want to have a uh, a small element in here, maybe I'll build this thing so I can see it a little easier again. So if I look at this, there's my differential element right there, like that. I'm going to say that this angle here is d theta. Okay. So I'm going to say that dl, the length of this, dl, is equal to r d theta. If this d theta is in radians, the arc length is the radius times the angle in radians. So Now the one thing that we have to remember is that x, x is the centroid of the element. So x, this one right here, um, where do I take that? We'll take that down here. So this is worth talking about. X is defined as the centroid of that element. And if, a few of them, it's, it's fairly easy. I mean, if we, we looked at this last one, we didn't make a big deal about this because y was equal to y, because as dy was going to 0, the centroid of the element became y, didn't it? Well, this one is a little different, because if I think of this, if I think of this as the x-axis again, and I have some angle in here, this being equal to theta, the centroid of that element is going to be different in this orientation than if that element is way up here, right? Then its centroid is located back there. So I'm going to have to modify this. I'm going to have to say that x is really equal to what? r times the cosine of theta, isn't it? As this element moves, I'm going to have r this change, and it's going to change by r cosine theta. So now I can put all of this together and say that x bar is equal to the integral. I can't say from 0 to 2 alpha because I'm, I'm, that would, from 0 to 2 alpha would have it um, setting like this, starting at this point and going up from there. I don't want to draw the picture on here and confuse people, but I have this below the axis and above the axis, so I need to be careful of the limits of my integral. It's going to be from minus alpha down here. This is minus alpha to positive alpha, there is positive alpha. And then I have to use x, so I'm making my substitution for my equation, that's r cosine theta. Okay, so that's the x piece. And then what do I have? I need um, dl, what's dl? r d theta, r d theta. So there's dl. Okay, so I've got dl there, and then I'm dividing this whole thing by l. What's l? 2 alpha r. 2 alpha r. Okay, so if I tidy this thing up, I recognize my integral is only over theta, so I can bring an r squared out. So I'm going to say that I have uh, r squared. When I take that r squared out, I get to cancel with the r in the denominator, so I'm left with r times the integral from minus alpha to alpha. Uh, I took out the r squared, so I just have cosine theta d theta. And what do I have in the denominator? I've canceled out that r. I have 2 alpha, don't I? So I could say then that this was equal to r times uh, 2 sine alpha divided by, is that right? Yeah, we'd have sine alpha and then minus a minus alpha, which would give, that's our trig identity there, but uh, uh, minus a, minus the sine of minus alpha is uh, tau, so I'd have 2 sine alpha. Good. 
and then I have to divide this by 2 alpha which I get to cancel the 2's and I come up with my final answer that x bar is equal to r times the sine of alpha divided by alpha okay and that's uh you know that's worth keeping if you look in the uh, back cover or the front cover of your textbook talks about centroids and whatnot it will probably have uh, that one there so you can I can you can tell me that the uh, centroid is located at r times sine of alpha divided by alpha okay interestingly enough it's not on the body itself okay um, and it's not required to be well good so I guess maybe I better that was uh, we integrated and we had that trig ID for minus the uh, sine of uh, minus the sine of minus alpha good well let's try another problem maybe you're tired of looking at uh, crusts of pies or crusts of pizza and you want to look at the uh, the whole thing so maybe we're going to say now we have something like this where we have the uh, the whole piece here and that wasn't real good that a little better so this goes from alpha to minus alpha okay and we know the centroid is probably going to hang out somewhere there the y centroid is pretty easy y centroid is equal to zero x centroid that's what we're looking for here a little more difficult it's going to be somewhere in here we'd like to try and find that so x centroid that's what we're looking for and I'm going to say that this is R and I haven't drawn this great it looks like this R is slightly different than this R but uh, we'll say it's a perfect pizza or perfect piece of pie and, and this R is the same as, as that R so I'm going to use the equation that x bar is equal to the integral of x dA over A right okay so I need to try and uh, figure out what these pieces are. What is dA? Well, I could say that that was equal to, uh, let's see, depends on how I'm going to make my element, right? I have a choice, don't I? Yeah, I have a choice. Why don't I say that uh, first off? I'm going to make take my element. I'm going to slice the uh, this thing. I'm going to take my element that looks something like that. Okay, where this distance here, I'm going to say is from there out to there is r naught, and this distance here, I'm going to say is dr naught okay um, so I could say then that dA is equal to R uh, let's say I'm going to have 2 R naught alpha dr does that make sense if I take uh, this length here which is uh, R naught times 2 alpha times dr yeah essentially taking this arc length this arc length and I am multiplying it by dr it should be not dr not so really as this gets smaller and smaller as dr not goes to zero I can uh, treat this as simply this dimension times the arc length the arc length being 2 alpha times r not because this is going to be uh, 2 alpha here okay and then the area is going to be alpha times r squared when we think about the area of a, of a circle having a uh, uh, clear around a circle is what uh, 2 pi in terms of radians and then we have uh, pi r squared so I think we can uh, by ratio of proportion yeah the area would be half of our total included angle here alpha times 
r squared. Okay, and I'm using r because I don't want to use r naught. I want to look for the area for the entire thing. The area for the entire thing, that is, this distance here, is back to that r. Okay, now the last thing that I need to do is I have to find the centroid for this piece here. This piece here has a centroid, doesn't it? And where is that going to be located? Well, that, that thing looks a lot like what we just finished up, right? I mean, our differential element looks very much like this. So I could say that that's located, that is, the centroid of this, centroid of the element, The centroid of the element is r naught times the sine of alpha divided by alpha. Does that make sense from what we just finished up? Yeah, we use the radius. I don't want to use r. I want to use r naught because my uh, my differential element is changing. It's at r naught rather than r. Then we have sine alpha over alpha. So that should work. So I'm going to take and put this with this and with that and see if we can get x bar then. So x bar will be equal to the uh, integral from 0 to r because this uh, r naught is going to go from 0 here clear out to here where it's equal to r and I will have then r naught times the sine of alpha divided by alpha times 2 r naught alpha dr naught. Okay, so again, this is your x, this is your um, dA, and then I have to divide by the area, which is alpha r squared. Okay, so with that, I have, let's see, what am I going to be able to do? I really I can take sine alpha over alpha out. I can take the two out. I can take uh, the alpha out, and I'm left with what? So I've got taking those things out. Sine alpha divided by alpha. I take that out. I took a 2 out, I took another um, alpha out, and I'm left then with the uh, integral from 0 to r. I've taken, so r squared, or r naught I should say, dr naught divided by alpha r squared. So we've got, let's see, 2, what's this turn out to be? The integral that's going to be equal to r cubed over 3, or r naught cubed over 3 evaluated at 0 and r which will be equal to then uh, r cubed over 3 minus 0. So I have r cubed over 3. So I have 2 thirds x bar x bar. So I've got 2 thirds r cubed sine alpha divided by alpha r squared, right? Which is two-thirds. Get to cancel that with that. And I get that x bar is equal to 2r sine alpha divided by alpha. I don't want to forget the 3. There we go. I got the 3 now. Is that correct? I think so. So we're looking at uh, 2 times r times sine alpha 
divided by 3 times alpha. And you could check that. It's a fairly common shape. You could check that at the front or the back of the textbook. A lot of times they have centroids for common shapes. You could Google centroids for common shapes and uh, hopefully it would have that. If you wanted to uh, do some investigation of your own, you might try a different element. Maybe we would slice this pie up a little differently. You think uh, this is kind of a weird way to slice a pizza or a pie like that. Could we slice it differently? Oh, absolutely. Let's try that. So if in this one I decide to uh, slice this thing a little differently, so I decide to uh, slice it like we might do a, a piece of pizza, take a, a slice like this, and we're going to say that uh, this is theta. So theta is going to go from uh, alpha or minus alpha to alpha. And then we're going to say that this angle in here, right there, is d theta. Okay. So when I look at this one, again, the area, the gross area of this thing is, is exactly the same as it was before, alpha r squared. That has not changed a bit because this, this piece here, this piece right here, has not changed. But uh, da has changed now, hasn't it? What's that going to be? Well, as this d theta goes to zero, this looks more and more like a triangle, doesn't it? So I could say that it's this length here, which is r d theta times this length here, which is going to be r, right? And then divide it by 2 because it's a triangle. Okay, base times height divided by 2. And then what about the centroid of this piece here? It has a centroid maybe there, and that's going to change. I mean, if it's a, if it's a, a piece down here, uh, that, that centroid is going to be located at different pieces, depending on whether we're looking at an element here or whether we're looking at an element there. So what is x equal to? x, the centroid for the element, is going to be, let's see, it's going to be affected by cosine theta, isn't it? And then it's also going to be, we know it's a triangle, so it's going to be two-thirds of r times cosine theta. That is the centroid for the element. Okay, the centroid for the element. So I put this whole thing together, that x bar now is equal to the integral, this time from minus alpha to positive alpha, of x, which is 2 thirds r cosine theta, times dA, which is r squared d theta, divided by 2, and then I have to divide by the area, which is alpha r squared, right? So I can say then that x bar is equal to well, it's not a function of theta. I get to cancel the 2's. I take an r cubed over 3 out. And I have then the integral from minus alpha to alpha of cosine theta d theta, right? I'm going to then divide this by alpha r squared. So I get to cancel that with that one. What does this thing turn out to be? When I do that integration, I'm going to end up with, um, what is that, 2. I think we went through this before. We're going to have uh, 2 times the sine of alpha, right? Yeah, 2 times the sine of alpha, because I would have uh, sine alpha minus a minus sine alpha. Yeah, it would get me 2 times the sine of alpha. Okay, so I put this in here. So I now have r times 2 times the sine of alpha. Do that right. r 2 sine alpha divided by alpha. And I've got, uh, up, 
I've just got that three there hanging around. That'll come down here. So I could finish up by tidying this up a little bit. I'd have uh, two times r times sine alpha divided by three alpha. Have I seen that before? I hope so. So what I had there, two times r times sine alpha divided by three alpha. Yep, that's correct. So we can start to have quite a bit of confidence in that answer. Is there an advantage of doing it one way or another? Um, this way is probably a little easier, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, you got to recognize, you got to integrate a trig function and know a trig ID, but most people can get through that fairly easy. The advantage in my mind is that this one is easier. I can recognize this as a triangle, and most people know that the triangle is a third and two thirds. Whereas our differential element here was this pie shaped piece, and we had just done that. And we just uh, proved that in the exercise before, but if it's been a while since you've done that and you don't have that at your fingertips, then this element uh, looks a lot better. Is there anything that uh, says that if you get down here and you say, oh, gee, I don't know that off the top of my head, can I re-slice this thing? Yeah, you can re-slice it. So hopefully that worked out. You've probably done some of these in math. Oftentimes they use this as a uh, good exercise for, for integration in math. Well, a lot of shapes are made up of things, circles and uh, rectangles and triangles that we recognize. So I want to try and look at uh, maybe not doing so much uh, calculus here, uh, but looking at composite shapes or composite bodies. So let me talk about that. So composite bodies. So if I have the, uh, let's say that we have a portion of a circle, and then we maybe have a trapezoid, and then maybe another portion of a uh, circle, something like this. Or, yeah, I would keep it interesting. Maybe make it a, a triangle like this. This uh, could have a, a centroid. This uh, could have a centroid. And this could have a centroid. And the entire thing may have some centroid. So let's talk about placing that here. And if I look at some reference, so I take this as my reference. I could talk about the distance. We could say that this is piece one. So I'm going to call that mass one. And maybe this is piece two, mass two, and piece three. So I'm going to say that this is mass three. And I could talk about the distance, uh, let's say x bar one, and the distance to this. We could say that that was x bar 2. And finally, the distance to this piece, I could say that was x bar 3. Okay. And then if I talk about the distance to this one, I don't want to confuse x bar, so let me talk about capital X bar for the centroid of the entire section. So I could say um, that if I look at the, the moment of those uh, uh, the, of the forces that the uh, masses lead to, I mean, we take the mass, we multiply it by the acceleration of gravity, we come up with a weight, and we could come up when, within a, a moment, and we'd be able to say that uh, m1 plus m2 plus m3, the total mass of this thing, acting through this point here, capital X, bar is equal to the individual ones. That is m1 x1 bar plus m2 x2 bar plus m3 x3 bar, which allows you then to say that x bar, capital X bar, is equal to the sum of all of the individual masses times their individual x bars divided by the sum of all the individual masses. And we could continue on with uh, y bar, where we have the sum of the masses times their individual y bar over the sum of all the masses. And we could continue on if we wanted to with a, um, a z bar. Have a capital Z is equal to sum of all of the masses times their z bar divided by the sum of the masses. And we could uh, go on and maybe say and also, if I want to just talk about uh, x bar, we could say that uh, 
capital X bar was not only equal to the center of mass, but we could say the center of area from the derivation that we did in the, the last time with those equations. I'm not going to go through all that, but I think it's an easy extension to this to say that you have the sum of all of the areas times the uh, centroids divided by the sum of all of the areas, and that would follow for uh, y. Could we do this with volumes? Absolutely. We could say that x bar would be equal to the sum of all of the volumes times the individual centroids divided by the sum of all of the volumes. Okay, So we would have that. Let me double check, make sure I haven't uh, miswritten something. A over sum of A, V over sum of V. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you, 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 could, uh, you could continue on if you wanted to. Well, let me, let me take these, particularly this one, and try an example. I, I think uh, it's probably best learned through doing examples here. So let's say that we have a problem that looks like this. And I have a, a shape here. That's a uh, rectangle and a triangle. I'm going to say that this is the uh, y direction. This is the x direction. I'd like to then find. I'd like to find the uh, x bar for the entire thing and y bar for the entire thing. I'll put some dimensions here. We'll say that this is 120 millimeters, that this is 150 millimeters, and that this is 240 millimeters. Okay, uh, And I'm going to break this into a piece one being this rectangle, and I'm going to say that uh, piece two is the, the triangle. And really, uh, as we go through this, this looks like some sort of a math equation, uh, but it's really encourages us just to use accounting. So let me build my table for accounting here. I could talk about the, uh, the part here. Oh, I think i got enough room here. So let me talk about the part and then its area, which would be in millimeters squared, and then its uh, x centroid, which is going to be in millimeters, and then the area times the x centroid, which is going to be in millimeters cubed, and then I'll talk about the uh, y centroid for that piece, which is again millimeters, and finally the area times the y centroid, which is going to be in millimeters cubed. Okay, so I'm going to say that uh, part one that's the uh, rectangle, and then I'll talk about part two, that being the, the triangle. So if I look at the area of this one, it's simply 120 times 150. I get 18,000. Okay, that's the area of piece one, 120 millimeters by 150. And this one, if you have 120 here, so I'm looking at this, the base of this triangle is also 120, because 240 less 120 gives you another 120. So it's really just half of the area of that rectangle, so we'll say 9,000. Now the x centroid of this rectangle is going to be half of 120, so 120 divided by 2, that gives me 60, right? And then where is the x centroid for this one? Well, it's going to be over 120. No matter what, i got to go over 120. That gets me to right there. And then I need another 120, because this is 120, isn't it? So I have to add to it 120 divided by 3, which gives me 160. So now I multiply this 18,000 times 60, and I have 1,080,000. Maybe I shouldn't have used millimeters. The numbers are getting fairly large, but that's okay. Now I multiply this 9,000 times 60, and I, or excuse me, 9,000 times 160, 9,000 times 160, and I end up with 1.44 million. 
Okay. So at this point, I could go ahead and find the uh, x centroid, but I think I'll finish up since we're looking for not only the x centroid but the y centroid. Let me do the y centroid simultaneously. So now I'm looking coming off of here, and the for the y direction, this is really just what 150 divided by two, so that'll be 75. And then this one, that's really just uh, 150 over three, which gives me 50. So now I take this. 75 and multiply it by 18,000 gives me uh, 1.35 million. And I take 50 and I multiply it by 9,000 gives me 450,000. Okay, so now when I sum this thing up, I'm going to sum up this column, I'm going to sum up this column, and I'm going to sum up this column. This is going to be the sum of the area which it turns out to be, what, 27,000. This is going to be the sum of um, A times X bar, which is equal to, when you go through that, 2.52 million. And this one is going to be the sum of A times Y bar, which turns out to be 1.8 million. Okay. So now we know from our equations here, if I'm looking here at uh, the X centroid, I take this column here and divide by that column there, right? Okay, so let's do that. So the centroid, the centroid for the entire region, is equal to uh, what sum of a x bar divided by the sum of the area, which is two five two o divided by twenty seven thousand. Get to cancel those zeros, and I come up with ninety three point three millimeters. Is the, uh, the units right on that? This would be what? Millimeters cubed divided by millimeters squared, right? Millimeters cubed over millimeters squared. So yes, I'd have millimeters. Does the answer seem reasonable? Well, it should be between the centroids of the two pieces. That is, it should be somewhere between 60 and 160. Indeed it is. Well, let's look at uh, y centroid which is going to be the sum of a y bar divided by the sum of the area, which is now this, 1.8 million, divided by the same 27,000. Our units are going to be the same. And you run the math on this and you get 66.67. I've got too many significant figures, but um, you can fix that. Our units work out, uh, it should be between these two numbers. It is between 50 and 75. So that's good. That's good. Well, the other thing that I would like you to recognize is that you can cut this up in a variety of different ways. Uh, for instance, could we uh, cut it up and take a negative area? And the answer is absolutely uh, we could, and we're going to do that in a little bit. The reason for that is sometimes you're given a, a shape like this. Maybe you take a square or rectangle and you take a circle out of it. So you have something that looks like that. It's very advantageous to subtract the circle from the entire piece. Uh, if you don't, any other way of cutting it up is, is really going to offer a lot of difficulty. Another good shape that uh, illustrates this is maybe you just clip off the corner. Okay, so again, you take the whole thing and you subtract that corner. So let's try that on this particular problem. We should indeed get the same answer. So let me repeat the problem very quickly here. So this is 120 millimeters to 40.
millimeters, 150 millimeters. So exactly the same problem. We're looking for exactly the same thing, but this time I'm going to choose to break it up like this. I'm going to look at a large uh, rectangle and then I'm going to, so one is going to be the whole thing and two is going to be this negative area that I have to subtract off of there. Okay. Um, so, and uh, this, this should be a little more sh little straighter line. Okay. So, let's do this. We'll say that we have a part, I think we can probably fit it in under here, the part, let's say part one, and then part number two. And we've got the area, and we have the x centroid, and we have area times the x centroid, and we've got the y centroid, and we have area times the y centroid. Again, this would be millimeters squared and millimeters, millimeters cubed, millimeters millimeters cubed. Okay, so part number one, remember that's the uh, large rectangle. That's uh, 150. Get a different pen here. So that's uh, 240 by 150. And then this piece here is this negative section which is going to be 150, and then if we look at this, 240 less 120 gives us again 120 across there, and this is this is negative. So let's see how this works out. The area on uh, this piece is going to be what 240 times 150 gives me 36,000, and then the area of this is. That's just that same the same one we had before, except it's negative. So I'm going to say negative nine thousand, right? And you got a hundred and twenty times one hundred and fifty divided by two gives me nine thousand, and it's negative because I am strip subtracting the area. So if I then tally this up, if I look at the sum of the area, the sum of the area there, that's going to be equal to twenty-seven. Thousand, which that's boding that well that I may be able to get this to work out the same answer. So the centroid for this is simply uh, 240 divided by two, so that would be 120. Uh, the centroid for this piece is going to be uh, 120 gets me to there. So I probably don't want to do it right there. Give myself a little more room. So 120 plus then I have two thirds of 120 because I'm going to come from this side, so that's two thirds of that distance. So two thirds times 120. So when you go through the math, that ends up being 200. So now I take this 120 times 36,000, and that gets me uh, 4.32 million. And then I take 200 and I multiply it by the minus 9,000. Be careful to recognize that negative there. So I have minus 1.8 million. So when I add these together, I'm going to come up with uh, 2.52. Two point five two, good. And uh, let's see. This was this is of course the sum of a x bar. And I guess for that matter, we could say that uh, capital x bar is the sum of a x bar divided by the sum of the area, which is two point five two. divided by this 27,000. Have we seen that before? I think we have right there, exactly the same number. We should get the same answer, 93.3 3 
millimeters. So now enough room to hopefully finish this thing up. Where's the Y centroid for this? This is just 150. It's gonna it's located right there, isn't it? 150 over two, so that's 75. How about the Y centroid for this piece? Uh, that's uh, two thirds of 150, right? Two thirds of 150. which gives me a hundred. So now I'm multiplying 75 times 36,000, which gives me 2.7 million. And here I'm multiplying a hundred times minus 9,000, which gives me minus 900,000. So when I add this up, I'm going to have the sum of a Y bar, uh, which gives me 1.8 million. So I look at this then y bar for the entire region being equal to this piece here, sum of a y bar divided by the sum of the area. So I have 1.8 million divided by 27,000. Have we seen that before? I hope we have. Right back here, exactly the same math. 66.7 millimeters. So we got uh, the same answer uh, two different ways. So I think that that should be encouraging. Uh, again, there's no requirement on which way you cut it up. Sometimes things will be easier and more, less easier and more easy. This one I don't know that made a big difference. Again, if you go back to like what I was mentioning as we, we were going to this problem, if you take something like this, it's it's really obvious that you want to use a negative area. You would want to take the area of this square or rectangle and subtract the circle. Or you'd want to take the area of this uh, square and then subtract uh, that little triangle there. So sometimes things will be fairly obvious which way you want to go. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. Well, that gets us to the end of our section and our work on centroids and center of mass and center of gravity and uh, uh, center of volume, center of area, center of length. And again, as we finish up every section, I would encourage you to, to tackle the homework problems, to practice this, to take these lecture problems and start out on a clean piece of paper and make sure that you can uh, do them on your own. Well, thank you for uh, watching and uh, take care until next time when we'll finish uh, this up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start a new section and uh, finish it up and finish up the term at the same time. So thank you and take care.